it's widely distributed scattered okay so what do we do we try to take a sample okay so one concern here is that if you have a variable which is measured in interval scale okay so that variable follows normal distribution if you measure that variable on the whole population okay i have given an example take any variable for that matter it it may not be exactly normal but it will it is likely to take the shape of a normal it is see assumption of normal distribution is only hypothetical okay there is no proof 2 plus 2 is equals to 4 it is not hypothetical all right okay for that reason what we do is to use a parametric statistics the conditions are that your variable should follow normal distribution that means what what are they saying what is the test saying because when they have designed the formula for parametric test they have considered that your variable will follow normal distribution so based on those conditions only they have derived the formula okay they have designed the formula for t test z test anova all those things so when they have made the algorithm for those tests the condition the assumption was that your variable will follow normal distribution that is the reason why when we want to make use of that test now we have to infer that our sample distribution or the measurements that we have done on our variable should also look like a symmetric distribution it should not be skewed okay this assumption of normality is not so rigorous rigorous for some of the tests okay you can even okay right fine any doubts here any doubts yes yes very much true very much true that is how you should do it yes you have understood that means before you perform a t test or before you perform a parametric test you should make for sure that your variable follows normal distribution if it does not follow normal distribution then no problem you have to use non parametric okay but researchers may follow may not follow that is a different story your guide how he tells you that is a different story but here we are we are here to make you understand the correct procedure this is the correct procedure one correct yeah. procedure but that is the procedure right. it is not correct or wrong that is the procedure yeah, but the tendency is directly identify what test to perform and people start performing those tests and come to a conclusion that's it that is how it is done that is how it happens in life but we should not do that because you got the research skill you are attended this program no now you are not like them you are different okay <laughs> all right okay sir beta ne beta ne ikkada akkada pc akkada pc akkada isko baina sir <clears throat> okay now before we move on to spss and then try to understand how to use this software a small test for ourselves whether we have understood or not okay small example small test okay okay uh, see here we have uh, a and b two groups okay we have conducted the same test in a there are 100 students in b there are 100 students on these 200 students we have conducted the same test 100 questions multiple choice same and we found that the mean the mean of a group group a was found to be 75 okay and the mean of group b was found to be say 50 okay now the mean of group a is 75 the mean of group b is 50 there were 100 students here 100 students here all the 200 students took the same test okay 
Now the question is, which group is doing better? Which group is doing better? Hmm? Which group is doing better? Yeah. How do you know? Hmm? Mean is? Mean is greater than? Mean is 75 for A and mean 50 is for B. So 75 is much greater than 50. So you can conclude that group A is better than group B. No, 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 no. Hmm, then? Uh, 75 is it the... Uh, that is a mean. Marks? Yeah, marks only. What is our variable? Our variable is marks. We have conducted a test on 200 students. What is my variable? Marks. Okay, I'm giving you the mean score of A. I have given you the mean score of B. Now I'm asking you to tell me whether section A or group A is better than B or B is greater than A. Which is greater? What is your conclusion? Quickly. A is greater than B, right? Okay. Our conclusion may be correct, but our procedure is wrong. Why it is wrong? Hmm? Ah, no, no, try to understand. What is mean? What is mean? Mean is a descriptive statistic. So to decide, to conclude, to infer whether A is greater than B, what should I do? I have to knock the door of inferential statistics. So without doing that, I cannot conclude. So mean on a stand alone basis will not help you to decide whether it is superior, greater or whatever. Even if you draw such conclusions, such conclusions are layman's conclusions, it is not having any statistical validity. You may still get the same conclusion. Even if you apply a parametric or non-parametric statistical test, you may still get the same conclusion, but our procedure is more important than the conclusion. That is the whole purpose of research. In our research, the procedures have to be accurate, precise. Okay? All right? Okay? So what should we do? We have to use either parametric or non-parametric statistical technique, apply on the data and decide. Then only we will be able to answer the question whether A is greater or B is greater. Until and unless we cannot draw any conclusion. Why? Because mean on a stand alone basis. Mean, why? Mean is a? Mean is not under inferential, no? All right? OK. So now we, we will discuss about SPSS. OK? SPSS software. Hmm. Uh, Okay, you can just start this SPSS software, just the way you start any Word or PowerPoint or anything. Okay, we are just opening SPSS software. Okay, it takes some time. Okay, this is SPSS. This is SPSS software, this is how it looks. Okay, so how does it look? It looks like an Excel. It looks like an Excel sheet. Okay, this entire region, this entire region, this entire region, okay, that is called, that is called data editor of SPSS, this entire region. This entire region is called data editor. Now you can see these two views, one is a data view, the other one is variable view, okay. So this is variable view, this is data view. In data view, you are able to see the column headings. All the column headings are VR, 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 VR is for variables so the sto SPSS story is all about variables. variables the story of data is all about variables, variables. the date there is nothing like data we are calling it as data data is only a collection of all the variables is data but there is nothing like data try to understand this the story is all about variables so the statistical analysis is all happening on variables but we say that it is data analysis okay you are able to understand this okay right now 
now we have to understand how to enter the data in SPSS and how to do the data analysis. Okay. As you can see, it looks like an Excel. It has rows and columns. Now it has two views. One is a data view, the other one is a variable view. Okay. Now in data view, you are able to see. Now we are currently in the variable view. Because this is highlighted. This is in golden yellow. This is where we are. We are now in variable view. Now we will go to data view. Now what is the difference between data view and variable view? This is my data view. This is my variable view. Okay, variable view has name, type, weight, decimals, all this. But it, this is not appearing in my data view. If I go to my data view, I get only VR, VR, VR. But if I come to my variable view, I am getting name, type, this. So what is the basic essential difference between variable view and data view? Hmm. Right. So, generally, when you want to enter the data, when you want to enter the data, what is the first step? What is the first step? What is the first step? Huh? Ah, identify the variables. You have to identify what are the variables, right? For example, we, uh, we told we are, I'm going to collect all the details of all the participants. Then if I'm planning to do it manually, if I'm planning to do it manually, then we will have serial number, name, gender, okay, then, then, age, age then community, okay, then marks, right, so like this we'll have, okay, so what are we doing here, we are trying to first identify the variable, okay, our focus is on variable. So first we have identified the variable, that is what we have to do. So when you want to enter the data in SPSS, the first focus is you have to enter the variable view. See there are two ways, there are many ways of data entry in SPSS. Generally SPSS is not user friendly for data entry. SPSS is not used for data entry because what will you do in data and for doing data entry you will use Excel. You will create such kind of rows and columns in Excel and you do the data entry. And when you are doing the data entry, what you have to do is, you have to first create a dictionary, data dictionary. For example, name. Name is not, because see, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to do the data analysis. We are not storing the records of all the people who are working for a company. That is relevant for a company to have the names of all the people who are working. But we are doing data analysis, no? So for us, name is not so important. Okay? So what we will do when you distribute a questionnaire to 100 people, so for on the top of every questionnaire, you write one code, code. Okay? Student code or employee code or subject code. So that code is sufficient. So if you later, any, any point of time, you have a problem, so you anyway have the code, subject code, so you can collect that questionnaire and then check whether the entries are properly made or not. Okay? You don't have to name, enter the name. Na entering the name is useless. Waste of time, waste of effort. Don't do it. Because on names, you cannot do any analysis. You cannot add names of all 100 people, divide by 100, you don't get anything. <laughs> waste of time, no? Unnecessary waste of time. So name is not so important. So we will replace this with subject code. Whenever you distribute a questionnaire, it will have so many, you know, instruments, so many things in it. So on the top of every questionnaire, you give a code. One, two, three, four. That code is sufficient. So that will be your student code or subject code. Okay? Then gender. So our variable dictionary. Okay? First serial number. Serial number is also not needed because this subject code will take off a serial number. Then name is not needed, so subject code. What will you write subject code? Indicates the number of the questionnaire. Then gender, okay? Now you have to enter only the numbers. In SPSS, you have to only enter the numbers, 
okay you should not write male you should not write female not necessary entering number is more easy or entering the word is easy okay numbers so what will you do we will give a code males are given one females are given the code two this is the data dictionary you will create for similarly for age now most of the time you capture the age as it is the way it is don't go for codes most of the time our research scholars will ask for codes age between 20 to 30 30 to 40 okay you are, you are asking him to tick don't go for that if you go for that you will get the codes but you will not get the actual age later on in spss if you have the actual age we can again create the codes how many people with 20 to 30 how many with 30 to 40 40 to 50 that is always possible but try to understand as a researcher your effort should be to capture the maximum information with limited resources okay so preferably don't go for such of such information where people are volunteering to give you don't ask them to give you in quotes don't go for 20 to 30 30 to 40 don't go okay so age as it is age is the actual age of the respondent now community community you will ask them you will not give them code right then you will ask them whether you belong to sc bc whatever okay then when you are entering the data when you are entering the data then you have to write community in your questionnaire you will give them sc st bc or whatever category it will be there in the questionnaire now we have to give the code for community sc is 1 ST is 2, BC is 3, then OC is 4. This is how you have to create the codes. So codes are create for, created for which type of variables? Codes are created for categorical variables. Codes are not created for metric variables. Okay? You are able to? Hmm? All demographic details you can have codes. They are all non-metric. They are all categorical. Okay. So this is the first step of doing the data entry. Once you get the question. And all this you have to do before. You should meet a statistician before you go for a data entry. Before you do the data collection. You should consult your statistician before you go for data entry. Before you finalize your questionnaire then only he will be able to help you. After completing the whole data, if you meet a statistician, he will do only post-mortem. Okay? Right, so when will you consult a statistician? Before going to the field. While designing the questionnaire also you can. Because the statistical, because the end should be kept in mind. When are you planning to submit your thesis? That date should be written in your study room. Don't wait for 10 years. Don't wait for the vice, vice chancellor to force you to complete your thesis with a huge penalty. It's unethical. Researcher's job is to do research and complete. When you sit to eat food, when are you going to complete your food? You will take 10 years. One lunch will take 10 years to complete. Five minutes I put together. So starting time, end time has to be decided in research. Don't prolong. Okay? So this is the one big caution or notice for our research scholars that you should always have the end. Okay? So when are you going to consult a statistician? Once you design your questionnaire, once your questionnaire is clear, once your variables are clear, once your objectives and hypotheses are clearly formulated, once your questionnaire is ready and your supervisor has given you the clearance, then have an appointment with the statistician and ask him that this is how I am going to conduct the survey or questionnaire and this is how I am going to distribute my questionnaire. Please let me know what analysis, these are, these are my objectives, these are my hypotheses. Please let me know what type of statistical test you are going to employ. Okay? So the statistical techniques have to be known to you before you go for to the field. Because certain types of statistical techniques are not possible with the data that you get. Okay? Then once he gives you a clearance, you have to go for a pilot test. Pilot study. Okay? So after going for a pilot study, you can do the real test. Okay? This is the procedure.
okay so here we are trying to understand how to enter the data so this is the first step so for a, we'll enter the same we'll enter the same details in spss in spss we are trying to learn how to enter the data Names, when you are giving the names, there are certain limitations. Your name has to be written as a continuous word. You should not have break. So I write student name. Okay, first student code. Okay, so student code is two words, no? So if I want to write student code in SPSS, I have to use a connector in between. I should not have a break in between. Okay, so the connector can be a underscore code. Okay, student code is my first variable. Then second is, second is name. Okay, I still take the name because name is though not needed for me, but I still take the name. Then next is gender. Gender. Okay. Age. Then age. Then community. Community. Marks one, marks two, marks in three subjects. So just hypothetically, I'm taking. Okay, just for demo. Marks three. Okay. Now, so if you are able to do this, then that much is also enough. Okay. But then now, what 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 are my categorical variables? My categorical variables are gender, gender, gender community. community. So what should I do? I have to indicate SPSS that one stands for males, two stands for females, right? So where should I where will I indicate SPSS that my gender is a categorical variable? And if I enter one, you should understand that it is for boys. Two means girls. Where should I? So you have this. Values, right? You are able to see these values. Yes. These values are only for categorical variables to indicate information about the codes that you have given. So just take your mouse pointer there, and then just do a left click. You will get this. So you have to enter the value. One value, one is boys or males, whatever. Okay. Then add. Then two. Okay. Two is for females. Okay. So then say okay. Then again for community. Community. One is. Yes. Yes. Then enter. Two. Two is for. S T. Enter. Okay. Then three. Three is for. P C. Four. Four is for postures. Okay. Add. After every entering, after every entry, you have to say add. Okay. That is what is required. Then say okay. We are done. Okay. We are done with most of the entries. Now see here. Again, you have all this. Your alignment of your numbers is all right aligned. Okay, your measures, your measures are to be given, right? Now this decimals, decimals means how many decimals you want to see. Okay, one or two. That is decimals. So if you make an entry, it will take, it will show you 2.00, 2.3.00, like that it will show you. Okay. So now we'll go and see how it looks in data view. So what did we do here? We were in the variable view. We gave the names of the variables, and we have given the values for categorical variables under values. That's all we have done. 
Okay. Now I come to my data view. Now in the data view, your variables are seen. Yes. Okay. So now what is what should we do here? You have to enter the data. That's all. Okay. You are able to see? Yes. So you should enter your data. You can just pull this to see. Okay, I just enter the data. Now you have to only enter the data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you enter these values, okay, you are able to see these dots? Yes. You are able to see the dots? What do dots indicate? Dots indicate missing value. And when I have entered 1, it is showing 2, 1.00, 2.00. Why? That is because you have decimals, two decimals. decimals. Two. Okay, so if you don't want to see those decimals, you come here and make it zero. It will go away. Okay? Right? Okay? Yes. Now, name. Name, we have to enter the name of the student. And gender, we have to enter as 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. That's all, no? Okay, age we have to enter, whether it is 13 years, 14 years or whatever age we have to enter, we have to enter. See here, SPSS will not differentiate between 1, 2 and 3. Even if you enter 3 here, it will take. Even if you enter 4 here, it will take. So that is the reason why SPSS is not a good tool for you to do the data entry. If you do it in Excel, you can program your Excel worksheet so that if you enter 3, it, it, should, it should not take. Because that provision is there in Excel, but in SPSS it is not there. So that what happens is, most of the times, people don't enter, do the data entry in SPSS. They will do the data entry in Excel and they will import that file in SPSS. They will import that file in SPSS. But this is your structure, this is your structure. These are the variables. Okay. These are your variables. What are your variables? Your variables are name, gender, age. And what are your cases? Your cases are students are your cases. Yes. If you want to enter the detail of the student's height, then what should you do? You cannot enter here. You have to create one more variable. You want to enter the details of weight. You want to enter the student's family income. Then accordingly you have to create one more variable. Create more and more variables depending upon your requirement. But you cannot create somewhere here. Because this line, this line is one case. This corresponds to the details of one student on all these parameters, on these variables. So this is the structure of your data. This is the rule for doing the data entry in Excel. Sir, uh, we yeah, we'll enter, we'll enter. We'll enter. Choice is yours. That is all cosmetic look. It's not going to make any difference. Okay, it's not going to make any difference. Right? Now, community, what should we do? We have to enter 1, 2, okay, 2, 3, 1, 4, or 4, whatever. Okay, I'm just randomly doing it. And then this is the marks. Okay, this is the data entry that you will do. <coughs> right, marks 3. Right? Okay? Now, all these variables are, see here, all these variables are numeric variables. So, in SPSS, your variables should be preferably numeric for doing the analysis. But we have to enter the name. Name is not a numeric variable, no? So we have to change. So what should we do now? We have to go to this type. This type indicates type of the variable. Name here indicates name of the variable. Here name means what is the name of your variable. My first variable is student code. Name is my second variable. Gender is my third variable. It is like that. Type means what type of variables. So in SPSS, these are the different types of variables SPSS supports. SPSS supports these many different types of variables, okay? Most of the time it should be a numeric variable because numbers are only amenable for statistical analysis. If you have names, then it is not any of any use. So because I have to enter the name and name is a combination of numbers, 
and alphabets, it will be a string variable for me. See here, if it is a numeric variable, it is saying width and decimals. But if I convert to string, it is asking how many characters. Okay? So I have to convert that to a string variable. So I want to convert this into string variable. See here, accordingly, what are the changes? It happens automatically. Just see here. Okay, name. Name is numeric. Decimals is two. Okay, here values are none. Anyway, values will not have any values. Okay? It is right aligned. All are right aligned. Measure is still not, we have not given information about measure. Okay? Now, if we convert that into a string variable, what are the changes that happen on the name variable? Please see here. Okay? I am going to change this into string. Okay? Then what happened? It became left aligned. And it became nominal. Okay? So in SPSS, these are the different types of scales. We have nominal, we have ordinal, and we have scale. So SPSS does not differentiate between interval and ratio. For SPSS, interval and ratio is scale. In SPSS, we don't have interval and ratio. In SPSS, we have only scale. We have nominal, we have ordinal, and we have scale. For SPSS, whether it is interval or ratio, it is going to be scale only. All right? Because the analysis is almost the same whether it is interval or ratio. <coughs> that is why in SPSS they have put it as scale. In most of the softwares, in most of the statistical software, it is like this only. They have, they have nominal, they have ordinal, then they have scale. scale. Okay? So it got converted and what is this alignment? Alignment means what? What do you mean by alignment? Okay. Alignment means how the numbers are arranged. How the numbers are arranged. See for example, you have 324. Okay? You want to add 14 to 324. You want to add 14 to 324. So what will we do? We put it here. That means this is right aligned. For numbers, by default it is always right aligned. But if you want to have a text, you would write start from here, go on. Again, next time you are starting from here. So for text it is always left aligned. But for numbers, if you say left align, is it going to give you any result? This is wrong. So for numbers, it is always right align. Okay, so that is what it is saying. So you don't have to worry much about it. Okay, but you should know what is what. Okay. So for numbers, it is always right align. Okay. For text, because it is going to be a text, that means SPSS has understood that this is going to be a text because you have made it into a string. So now see what happens. Okay, dots have gone away. That means what? SPSS is not worried whether you have entries there or not because it is not going to be of much use for you because it is a string value. Right? So this is the basic way in which you enter the data. First you go to the variable view, give the details of all the variables, then you come to the data view and then you enter the data. Right? Then you need to save this file. Okay, to save this file, same procedure, file save. See here, these are the different files supported by SPSS. SPSS has so many different files. Data file, syntax file, output file and script file. Most of the time we will be using only two types of file. One is the data file, the other one is output file. We are going to use only two types of files. Whenever you are going to do the data analysis, only two types of files are considered. One is the data file, the other one is output. output. Okay. Now this file is the data file. This file is the data file. Okay. The file where we have entered the data, that file is called the data file. And what is the output file? Output file is the file where we get the results. Okay. If you ask SPSS, give me the mean of age, give me the mean of this, or whatever analysis you ask SPSS, in Excel what happens? In Excel where do we get the result? In the same cell where you have left your cursor, right? Same worksheet, yes. Right? It will not open a separate worksheet. But because it is a database, because it is a database software, what it will do is, it will create another file and it will give you the result there. Your results will not appear here. Your results will not appear here. Your results will appear in a different file. That file is called output, output file. Okay? So, so even if we save this file, 
we have to save this file, right? So even if we save this file, it will create an output file and it will tell us that we have created a variable, we have created this file and we have given the name for this file. And that information will be shown in output file. Right? So what we will do? We will save this file. File save. Okay? So if we save this file, this is our data file. So where should we save this file? We can save this in my desktop. Okay? Okay, I'll just call this as HCDC. Okay, HCDC one. I have given. Now, what is the file extension of this data file? Dot .sav. Dot .sav is the file extension of data file. What is the file extension of word file? Dot .docx. Okay, so here we have the file extension as dot .sav. So dot .sav is the data file. So the moment I save this file, the moment I save this file, okay, it is going to get it saved in desktop, okay, and then file name is hcdc, keeping eight of eight variables. If you don't want to save all the eight of eight variables, you here again you can select this, and you have an option, okay. You don't want to save details about marks two, three, something like that, then you can deselect this. Okay, that option is also there. Okay, right. But here we are saving all the eight of eight variables. Okay, then you just say save. The moment we do save, the moment I click save, what happens is it will. It has opened. This is the output file. See here, this is the output file, and it is saying that on the desktop, on the desktop, I have created a file with the name hcdc. This is my data file. This is the purpose of the output file. The purpose of the output file is to give you the results of the analysis and also to give you information about the changes that you make. Okay. Now we also need to save this output file. This output file should also be saved. So I will also save this output file. Okay. Where should I save? I will save at the same place on the desktop. Okay. Now what is the file extension of this output file? Dot, dot, oh, see here. What is the file extension of output file? Dot SPV. Dot SPV is the file extension of the output file. Dot SAV is the file extension of data. So, whenever you are working on SPSS, you should always have these two files visible. One is the data file, the other one is the output file. I have given the same name, right? So I will say save. Okay? Now see here, this is my Okay, so this is my data file. So this is my data file. This is my output file. So two files are ready. Okay, this is how you should have when you are working on the SPSS, right? Now, what is the next step? What is the next step? What is the next step? You are able to trace out the steps. The first step was. We opened SPSS, we went to the variable view, we went to the data view, right? And then we created the variables. Variables we have created and then we have given the values. Values are for non-metric variables. Values are not for metric variables, okay? Then we went to the data view and we have entered the data, okay? Now the next one is, next step is, what is the next step? Next step is data cleansing not analysis because the human input is here right so you should be very accurate about the entries that you have made so what you should do is you should at least 
you know, for 50% or 30% or 20% of the entries that you have made, you have to cross-check and verify whether the entries are correct or wrong. Because different people will do the data entry for you. Sometimes you may do the data entry or sometimes you may take your help. Okay, so sometimes it is quite possible that, you know, there may be some, there may be some errors. Those errors are maybe some extreme values. For example, for females, you might, somebody would type three. One and two, one and two is only permitted. But sometimes three. So those values are called outliers. Those values which are extreme values and which don't describe our data, they are outliers. All right? So the next step is you have to cleanse the data. So after doing the data cleansing, you can do the analysis. Analysis happens in fraction of seconds. The whole effort in data is only with regard to data entry. First, it, it takes a lot of time to collect the data because when you are collecting the primary data, so meeting people and collecting information, that's a really very, very difficult job. It will take lots of time. The next is data entry, right? Then after data entry, you have to do Right? Data cleansing. Okay? Any doubts here? Any doubts? Okay? Now, we have to do the analysis. Okay? We have to do the analysis. Right? Now, before doing the analysis, you have to save your files. You have to save your files. Okay? I've already saved my file. HCDC. File is here. Okay? Are we avoiding the If you want, I'll write the name for you. That is only a waste of time. You can enter enter your name because anyway we have given this as a string variable, no? So string variables. String variables are not amenable for any statistical treatment. They are all waste variables. Okay? So that is the reason why I am avoiding. If you want, I will write the name. Ganesh, Suresh. Yeah, yeah. That column will not be there. That column will not be there when you actually do it. Because as I have told you, you have a student code or subject code or employee code. If you are doing it on people, you have... Subject code. Subject is the person on whom the data has been collected. That is a technical name. So have the subject code. For example, you are visiting 10 different organizations for your data entry. Okay. From 1 to 50, if you have collected 50 from each organization, then segregate your questionnaires. 1 to 50, organization 1. 51 to 100, organization 2. Then you have 1 to 400 questionnaires. Okay, for every questionnaire, you give one number. That will be your code. Then beside, that will be your first variable. Subject code. So what will be your second variable? Organization. How many organizations you have visited? Four or ten. Okay, one to ten. Okay? Like that, you have to organize. It's all logic. It's all how you are going to, how did you go and distribute? The same information has to be given to SPSS. If you don't want to have an, an, any analysis, organization was. Organization you are going to pull up all the, then don't do any entry. But preferably do the entries. Because once you do the data entry, later on, sometimes you will be requiring how organization one employees are different from organization two employees. That time information will be needed. That time again you will not sit with your questionnaire, look at, because once you are with your PhD, again, you will not be able to trace out your questionnaires, no? So for that time only, do all the entries. Later on, you can even write a paper on the entries that you have made, okay? So capturing the information, capturing the variable information and inputting in your SPSS is very, very important, okay? Yeah. Hmm. In the questionnaire itself. Hmm. So, how do we take that data over here? Like, if I give a subject code, suppose my name is Sushma, Sushma has cross checked like uh, question for two times. Mm -hmm. So, how can that reflect here? I mean, like, it will be taken two times, or my subject code is given one person, one subject code will be given. Correct. So, how that will be taken? That is why you have cleansed the data. Because the same person giving twice. No, no, I didn't understand your question. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Please, no, no, please. It's okay, sir. Fine. Uh, uh, yeah. if, if we take data, like uh, to cross check, to check the reliability of the data, mm. so we do give the questionnaire to the person already we have given, already questionnaire was given, second time. For checking second the, time? Yeah, checking the reliability. 
Mm. So how does this affect our... Uh, See, reliability is something different, right? We are still... Reliability is something different. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got your, I got your thing. So that will be one, another variable, no? I'll explain that. <laughs> See here. Okay, subject code. Okay. See, preferably what you should do is, you should have entries for each item. For example, job satisfaction, okay? Job satisfaction has how many questions? We call them as items, we don't call them as questions. Okay, technically it is called as item. For example, you want to measure the job satisfaction of people, employees, working in turn different organization. And job satisfaction and emotional intelligence is your objective of research. Job satisfaction and emotional intelligence, okay? Then, job satisfaction has how many items? 10 items. Okay, subject code 45. Okay, item, what is her response on item 1? If it is on a Likert scale, 1 to 5. So write down what is her response, whether it is 4 or 3 on the first item. Then what is her response on the second item? So this item is one variable for us. Okay, that is how you should capture the details and input this in SPSS. Okay, how many items are there in job satisfaction? I told 10, like this, go on up to 10. Okay, right? Now, again, emotional intelligence is another questionnaire which you have administered along with this. How many items are there in emotional intelligence? Maybe five, okay? So, emotional intelligence one, item one, emotional intelligence item two, like this, emotional intelligence item five. Okay, you don't have to do the totals. You don't have to do the totals in Excel. Otherwise, some of our researchers, what they will do is, on the questionnaire only, they will find the total of job satisfaction. How many items are there in job satisfaction? 10 items. So they will add all the scores, and then they will say, why should I do so much of data entry? I will have only two columns, one on job satisfaction, one on emotional intelligence. How much is the total for subject code 45? How much is the score on job satisfaction? They will add all this and then they will do entry only for job satisfaction total. So that is not appreciated. That is not appreciated because if you have that kind of a data, then you cannot know reliability. You cannot know the reliability of either job satisfaction or for, right? And most of the time, you know, uh, for getting the reliability, you don't have to administer the test more than once. If you administer the test more than once, there are, there are these are ground realities. For filling your questionnaire one time only, that person must have struggled a lot. Again, why are you asking that person to struggle? Chances are you may not get the questionnaire back. Okay, and then and then scientifically, it is not necessary that to know the reliability of the scale, you don't have to administer one twice because if you administer the test once it is internal consistency if you administer the test more than once it is temporal consistency internal consistency is more powerful than temporal so if you administer the test once in SPSS we have so many statistical techniques through which you can know the reliability okay it is not necessary so this is what you are asking okay okay All right so now uh, Okay, we are here. So we are in the output file, right? We are in the output file. From the output file, you are able to see this icon. So if you press this star, you will go to the data file. So what I will try to do is, I will find the total of all these three marks. Marks 1, marks 2, plus marks 3. How to find the total of these three marks? What will I do is, what will I do is, I will just go to transform. In transform, we have compute. Okay, transform, compute. What is my target variable? See here. What is my objective? My objective is I want to have one more column here with the name total. 
that means one more variable with the column heading total that total should be the total of all these three marks marks 1 plus marks 2 plus marks 3 that should come here okay so to do that in spss you have a facility called transform transform compute okay so if you select transform and compute you have this target variable what is your target variable target variable is the variable which you want to focus on that will be your total total okay total underscore marks all right so this is going to be the what is the expression here the expression is marks one see here SPSS is also showing you the scales of measurement. What are the scales of measurement? This is interval scale. This is the ladder is interval scale. Gender is nominal, right? Gender is nominal. So balloon, three balloons. This is nominal. Name is also nominal. So these are the three circles or three balloons. So this symbol is for nominal. This symbol is for scale. interval scale or scale. Okay? So marks 1 plus, I have to say plus marks 2, bring it here, again press this, bring it here. So the expression is complete, marks 1 plus marks 2 plus marks 3, this is my total marks and then say ok. If I say ok, what will happen? It will again take me to the output file, again it will take me to the output file, it will tell me that this is what you have done, ok, see it is taking me to the output file, it is saying. You have created a new variable called total marks using the option compute and this total marks is total of marks 1 plus marks 2 plus marks 3. This is the syntax actually. This is the syntax of the operation that we have done. Again if you go to the data file, how to go to the data, data file? You can use this. Now see here a new variable has been computed with the column heading total marks. This is a new variable. Okay. Sorry? Uh, this, if you go to the output file, from the output file, you can directly go here. Okay, you have here, right? Yeah, yeah. These are the different ways of doing the same thing. One option is, if you keep your mouse pointer here, you can either go to the output file or you can go to the data file. Okay, now you are in the output file. So there is one icon here, go to data. This star, this star icon is for go to data. Right, it is written, right? So if you just do a left click here, you will go to the data, okay, total marks. Now you can even compute percentage for this, you can even compute percentage for this, right, okay. So I will quickly double this data, okay. I want to create, I want to delete this total marks. I want to delete this total mark. So what is the option? Select and clear. It will go away. Okay. You want to create clear this variable also. You want to clear this variable. You want to create this case. Fifth case you want to remove. So what is the option? Go to right click and clear. It will go. Okay. Right. So for our uh, for doing the analysis, what I do is Control C. And I will just put control V here. Okay? So that we get data on 12 students. Okay? Now, what is that we can do here? Now again I'll go to analyze. Okay, again I go to transform, compute variable. My old function is still there. Okay. So again I'll say okay. So I got the total, total marks for all the all the 12 students. Okay. So I'll write here 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now what we can, what analysis can we do here? I can know because I have the total marks. I have the total marks of how many students? 12 students. I can know whether there is any significant difference in the performance of students belonging to this category. Yes. Okay. Right? Right? 
You are able to understand? Okay. So what are we doing now? We want to know whether there is any significant difference in the performance of students belonging to boys and girls. Whether boys are getting better marks or girls are getting better marks. So to do that analysis, which test we should do? Which test we should do? Which test we should do? Hmm. You have to understand the statistics now. Now we are going to statistics. Now SPSS will again not teach you which statistics you have to do. Who will teach you? Chat GPT will teach you. <laughs> okay, you can ask Chat GPT, I have the data like this. I want to know whether there is in SPSS, which statistical technique should I use to examine the significant difference in the performance of students belonging to boys and girls. Write this, you will get the answer. Okay? But you cannot entirely rely on chat GPT. You should always cross check. Okay? So you should have your own original knowledge, right? Otherwise, chat GPT will get a PhD. You will not get a PhD. Okay? Right? So what are we doing now? We are going to do T test. What is T test? What is T test?
and you want to know whether this sample of 100 students marks belongs to a population whose mark is known to you then in such cases you will have we will use one sample t test you have one sample you have marks of 100 students you will be able to compute the mean and you want to check whether the mean of these 100 students is coming from a population whose mean value is known to you that is one sample t test Two sample t-test means what? Two sample here months. means not two samples actually, not research methodology sample. Research methodology sample is different from this statistic sample. Yes. You have only one sample, but you have bifurcated them into two groups. Mm -hmm. Here sample means groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what is two sample? Two sample means you have two groups. Boys and girls, something like that. And you want to compare the mean of this group with the mean of this group, that is two samples. Okay, this is two samples. Again, in two samples, you have two different scenarios. You have two different scenarios. One is one is called independent sample steam test. The other one is fair. Now again, in independent sample t test, you have two types. One is homogeneity of variances assumed. It is not assumed. Same story, not assumed. Okay. Right. So these are the different types of t tests. One sample, two samples. In two samples, you have independent samples, paired samples. In independent samples, you have variances assumed. That means what variances assumed means variance of the first group is same as variance of the second group. Here, variance of the first group is not same as variance of the second group. Okay? So, these are the different types of t-tests that are available in SPSS. Okay? Alright? So, we quickly do. What is the difference between independent samples and paired samples? If the sample is same and we are uh, performing two times, then we use paired uh, t-test. Okay, like it is like, you know, for example, you have 50 students, 50 people, 50 employees. Okay, employee code, one variable, one to 50. Okay, you have sent these employees for a training. Training, before and training. After. so it is like before and after. It is pre-test. Okay, post test. Okay, so this is this this score and this score are correlated with each other. They are paid. That is why it is called paid samples. Okay, this score and this score they are not independent of each other. They are related with each other. It is repeated measures. Repeated measures, paid, correlated t test is all that. Okay, what is independent samples? Independent samples means you have different sets of scores, scores as one variable, gender as another variable. Okay? You have a score here, you have gender, either one, 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 and again two, 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 two. One is for boys, one is for girls. Okay? So this score, you are you'll have the scores of this scores is nothing but your total marks. Total marks of boys, total marks of girls. You are comparing. So this sample and this sample are independent of each other. That is why it is called independent samples. It is like independent groups. Okay? Or independent. They call it as independent samples. This group is considered as one sample in statistics. This group is considered as one sample. This group is considered as another sample. And what are we doing? We are checking whether this sample is similar to this sample. That is what we are doing. Okay? So how to do that? Sir, can't you perform proportion testing in SPSS? Proportion? Or do we have sample proportion for this? That is there in, that is not there in this version. Okay, that is there. Otherwise you can use, you want to use binomial, which test you want to use? Z-test. Proportion-based Z-test. Proportion kit you rather gather? Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-
SPSS, that see, is in SPSS, we don't have Z-test also. Why it is not? See, earlier, earlier Z-test was used. Before the discovery of T-test, there used to be a test called Z-test. Okay? What is Z-test? Z-test is the same. Z-test was the same for this. Okay? Before the discovery of T-test, we used to use Z-test. That test was called Z-test. And Z-test was for large samples. Okay? Then what happened was, one person by name, William Seeley Gosset, one person by name, William Seeley Gosset, discovered that when the sample sizes are small, <coughs> Z-test is not doing its job properly. When the sample sizes are small, Z-test is not doing its job properly. He discovered a flaw. Yes. Okay? So what he did, because a person who discovers a problem will only give a solution. It is like that, right? Yes. Whenever you discover a problem, you will only give a solution, right? So what happened? He has suggested a formula for that. When the sample sizes are large, okay, Z-test was used. Yes. But when the sample size is small, less than 30, okay, William Seeley Gossett discovered that Z-test is not doing its job properly and he discovered some problem. So he suggested that instead of using Z-test, when the sample sizes are small, you should use T-test. You should use T-test. T-test is based on his name, student. Because when he was, when William C. Gosset was working for a particular company, his company did not allow him to publish his findings on his own name. So he has used a pseudonym or a pen name with the name student. And he has given the name of the distribution as student T. Okay, that is the story. Right? So what you will do is, you will use a T test. We have used T test when the sample sizes are small. When the sample size is large, Z test. When the sample size is small, T test. But over a period of time, they have discovered that when the sample size is small, you are using T test. When the sample size is large, T test is still adequate. Yes. Then why do they Now Z test is dead and gone. So even for your research, even for your articles, even for whatever be your research, okay, whether your sample size is small or large, you will always use T test. But in academics, when you are, when they teach you, they will teach you Z-test and T-test. That is a part of academics. But for practical purposes, for your articles, they will use only T-test, whether your sample size is large or small or medium or whatever be the size. Right? So we will do this T-test. In fact, proportions, what is to use? Hmm? Proportions. Proportions and a... Manam, you see our variable is, our variable is interval scale, no? Uh, when yes. will you compute proportion? Uh, ordinal, like you said, um, percentages. Mm. How many belong to this function? We have those tests also, for proportion also, we have those tests, comparing with the sample proportion and... You have test proportion. of single proportion, test uh, of all that is same, same like means, mm. we have for proportion. That test is different, but we are discussing... Those are not tests. there in this, in this SPS and software. That, 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 that. They are there here also. They are there, but it is not there in this version. Okay, in this version not there, but it is there. Okay, right? Yeah. Okay, see here. Okay, so what we should do is we will do T-test, right? Where to do T-test? See, all statistical tests, all statistical tests are available under this analyze. Analyze, okay? Analyze. Okay? Analyze, American spelling analyze. So you just do a left click, just do a left click, you will find all the statistical analysis arranged here. Okay? Now our job, we are comparing the means now. T-test is used to compare the means, right? Yes. So what is that you want to compare? That is very important. So when you, when you say that you want to compare the means, you have these many tests. Comparing the means, you have one sample, one sample, independent sample, spared sample, and one way ANOVA. These are the tests that are used for comparing the means. Okay? You, we can do one sample t-test. Okay? We have selected one sample t-test. What is our variable total marks? Okay? Right? So we will test, we will take any value, say 45, or say 35. Okay? 35. Or what is our test value? Test value is what? We have a sample of how many students? 12 students. 
We want to check whether these sample of 12 students belong to a population which is having a mean of 35. So what will be our null hypothesis? Null hypothesis will be there is no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. Okay, that is our null hypothesis. Okay, so that is what we are testing, right? So in options you can, okay, right, these things are not there, right? So we have taken our total max as our test variable. This is one sample t test we are doing. So just say okay, and this is the mean. What is the sample mean? 44 is the mean. The mean of 12 students is 44. And what did we take? We have taken it as 35. So we are comparing 44 with 35. Is it significant? Is it significant or not? You have to, this is the T value. What is the T value here? Now how will you write the analysis? How will you write the table? psychology, social work, business management, APA. you have to read APA style manual, 7th edition, Publication. that name of the book is called as Publications Manual of the American Psychological Association, 7th edition is in the current, currently following. So you have to read that manual, okay, understand how to write, how to structure your table, how to write your how to write the table, how to give the details of t-test, how to give the details of ANOVA, everything is discussed in that style manual. So unless and until you don't read, you will not <coughs> be following yes. that style manual. Okay? So first and the foremost is you have to read that style manual. Okay? Right. Now, according to that style manual, every table will have a table number. Table number and it will have a table title. Every table will have three features. One table number, table title, body of the table. Okay? Now what are we doing? We are giving the results of one sample t-test. How to get the results of one sample t-test? You have total marks, you have n, mean, standard deviation. How to write standard deviation? Should I write it as SD or should I write like this? That is also given in style manual. Chicago style manual is different, APA style manual is different, medical research style manual is different, political style manual is different, economics is different. So, depending upon your domain, you don't know. Who will give? Right? You have the answer? You are so lucky, no? So blessed. You are getting answers at the you just have to type and wait. 
And in research, no, chat GPT will give you results only up to 20, 21 years. Okay, guys. We, we are not so much interested. 21 to 23, what is happening? We are not worried. Okay, right? So now here, so total marks. So here you have to write the variable, right? Okay, total marks. Okay, any student. How much is the mean? 44.33. Okay, write down the standard deviation. Okay, then you give the t value, right? Then you give the significance. You can also give degrees of freedom if you want. Okay, you can also give degrees of freedom. Then you can also give significance. Okay, our t, how much is our t value? How much is our t value? How much is our t value? t value is this. Degrees of freedom is 7. Significance is? 0.007. Okay, t value is how much? 5.097. 5.097. How many decimals you should use? 2 or 3. For standard deviation, how many decimals for? Mean how many decimals? The shell manual will tell you. Shell manual will tell you. Right? So degrees of freedom is 7. Significance is? Significance is always written as 0 0.000. It is not written as 0 0.00. Okay, significance is always written as per the initial manual. You have to write as 0 0.00. You should not write as 0 0.00. Sometimes you may get 0 0.45 also. That time you should not write as 0 0.45. You have to write as 0.45. Okay, so this is the result of one sample t test. Now, how will you do the interpretation of this? This value is less than less than 0 0.05. If this value is less than 0 0.05, you will reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null. To reject the null hypothesis. What is your null hypothesis? Your null hypothesis is sample mean is same as population mean. That is your null hypothesis. To reject that null hypothesis, you should have a significance value less than 0 0.05. If you have this value, which is less than 0 0.05, then you can happily reject your null hypothesis. This value is nothing but, this is type 1 error. Probability of committing type 1 error is this significance. So if you wrongly reject your null hypothesis, how much error you are going to commit? No error. That means with 100% confidence, you can reject your null hypothesis. And you can safely conclude that the sample mean of 44.33 of 12 boys is not coming from a population whose mean is? 35. 35. Sample is different, population is different. We don't have any relation with that population. That is a conclusion, right? Okay, now next quickly. We are. I paint the time. Time I paint that. Five fifty one. Okay, we are running out of time. Okay, quickly we will complete at least this. He right. Ah, uh, compare means right independent sample t test total max. Now what are we doing? We are doing independent sample t test. Independent sample t test, right? You will take it, bring it here, okay? How many variables are involved in independent sample t test? One is the dependent variable and another is the independent variable. Independent variable is a categorical variable. So this is our gender, okay? Define groups, how did we code gender? We have coded as one and So that information you have to give, okay? Then just say continue. Just say continue. So you get the result of independent sample t test. Okay. How many boys? Eight. How many girls? Four boys. Yes. Okay. Mean of boys is this. Mean of girls is this. And this is the result of t test. And this is the result of. This is the significance value. Okay. As I have told you, in independent sample t test, there are two two <coughs> types. What are they? What are the? In independent sample t test, there are two types. One is homogeneity of variance assumed, 
Homogeneity of variance, not attention. What is variance? Variance means what? Square of standard deviation. Variance is square of standard deviation. Okay, see here. Variance means the square of standard deviation. Variance of boys, if it is same as variance of girls, then we will use one t test. If variance of boys is not equal to variance of girls, then SPSS will compute another t test. So to check whether the variances are similar or different, SPSS will compute a test. That test is called Levin's test. Okay, what is Levin's test? Levin's test is a test which is done to check whether the variance of boys is same as variance of girls. Variance of group 1 is same as variance of group 2. Now this is the result of Levin's test. This is the result of Levin's test. F value is the result of Levin's test. This is the significance. How much is the significance? Point, point 0.816. Okay, what if, if you are checking the variances of <coughs> boys and girls, what will be the null hypothesis? Both variances are equal. Same. Variance of boys equal to variance of girls. That will be your null hypothesis. To reject that null hypothesis, that significance value should be less than 0 0.05. Is it less than 0 0.05? No. Then what should we do? We have to retain the null hypothesis. That means variance of boys is same as variance of girls. So we have to use this t value, not this t value. Right? We have to use this t value, not this. How much is your t value now? Point seven. See, t value is always positive. T is never negative. Okay? Boys minus girls will give you one value. Girls minus boys will give you one value. The formula of T is in the modulus. T is always served hot, no? T is never cold. So T is always positive. T is never negative. In your thesis, you have to always write a positive value of T. You should never write a negative value. If you write a negative value of T, that means you have not understood what is T. It is not wrong. You have not understood. Alright? So this is how we write the now. How will you write this? Now all that you have to write, you have to write the story about this also. To examine the significant difference in the marks of boys and girls, the data was subjected to independent samples t-test. When the, when the results of independent samples t-test were observed, it was observed that the homogeneity of variances assumed was retained. All the homogeneity of variances condition was not violated. Hence, the t value pertaining to equal variance assumed is selected, and that t value is displayed in the tables, in table so and so. So, this text you don't have to create a new, you for this Levin's test you don't have to write much. See, most of the time what happens is when you are writing your thesis, you will see your seniors. Choose copy got the big Whenever you do an independent sample t test, you have to compulsorily do a discussion about homogeneity of variances. Please try to understand this. Because independent sample t test has always two. One is variance assumed, not variance assumed. So what did you do? <coughs> Yeah. If this value is 0 0.00, okay, assuming that this value is 0.00, then we will take this t value. Alright? Then we will take this value. Why? Because homogeneity of variance condition is violated. That means there are equal variance. Equal variance is not assumed is correct. Equal variance, there is no equal variance. There is equal variance, there is no equal variance. So we will select this value. Alright? Okay? Yes. Alright, so this is about independent samples t test. You again, again you have to again you have to write your table. Your how you document this is very, very important in your thesis. Again you have a table number, table title, then okay. You can always follow the same button. Okay? Mark of boys. Marks of girls. Okay. 
Then you write the number, how many boys, how many girls. You write the mean of boys, mean of girls. Write down the standard deviation. And then how much is the p-value? Write it in the center. How much is the p-value? Your p-value is 0.724. So it is 0 0.724. How much is the degree of freedom? You can write down then. Okay? And how much is the significance? Significance of t is? How much is the significance of t? 0 0.486. 0 0.486 means what? More than more than more than the 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 more Boys and girls are performing on par with each other. Mean of boys is same as mean of girls. That is a final conclusion, right? So that is how you have to you have to give that table, and you have to conclude it in that manner, right? Okay. Then we can do one. Go ahead and then do paired sample street test. Okay. How will you do paired sample street test here? You can check whether the marks of marks one and marks two is same or different. Okay, there is a significant difference in marks one and marks two. That is what you can do to do paired sample street test. Okay, so go to analyze compare means paired sample street test. Okay, you take bring marks here, then you can bring marks two here. Okay. Then you can just say okay. So this is the result of marks one mean is this, marks two mean is this. This is the standard deviation. Again, besides this, you write a t value and then do the conclusions. So how much is the t value? T value is 2.956. How much is the significance? Point. Point zero point one three. That means what? Less than zero point zero three. Is it significant or not significant? Significant. Significant. Significant means mean marks one is not same as mean marks two. This both are not different. Same. That means performance of students in marks one is not similar to performance of students in marks two. Right? Okay. So now you don't have to worry about the formulas. No, you have to learn how to write the do the interpretation. Right? Okay. You are. We are done with the time. Six. You want me to continue? I'll continue. Choice is yours. <laughs> or you want me to stop here? I'll stop. Choice is yours. But you should be active in learning because I always go with the maxim: What's learnt with pleasure is learnt in full measure. Okay. So it should be a happy learning. You should not learn statistics with tears. <laughs> there is a book with this title. Statistics without tears. You can purchase that. <laughs> okay? You want me to continue? Discuss. Okay, discuss.